Hi, I'm Ginger Lapid Bogda. I'm an Enneagram author, a trainer at Consultant and Organizations, and I think it's so important for us to understand the types, each of the nine types and nuance, both paying attention to things that are very obvious or explicit about each type and often the things that are not so obvious or that might be more implicit. So I want to share with you three things that are implicit in how type threes function. The first is they tend to think in threes. No, I'm serious, but they do. But actually, the first thing, they you know, three things, three main points, whatever, but that's maybe more obvious. But what can not be quite as obvious is they have what I refer to as a lockdown mind. It's like the mind of the three, they figure out where they want to go, what direction they're supposed to go in. They lock into an idea or a plan of how to get there, and they get very focused on that. And that's maybe obvious, but they get a lockdown on it. So... Although they can be flexible about it, they really have this idea, it's almost like an idealized sense or image of what's supposed to happen and how it's supposed to work and how they're supposed to get there. And when that doesn't happen, they get very, very disheartened and disappointed. And part of it is because they had an expectation that they created in their mind and then their mind locked down on it. The second thing I think about threes that is maybe not so obvious um, is that they're inside, there is this deep sweetness to them. Yes, they're a heart type. They're formed in the heart center, but they use their heart function to read their audience more than to read themselves. But inside, there is a sweetness and a dearness to them that when they start to let themselves feel like they don't have to put on a show, they don't have to impress, they can just relax a little bit. I don't know any type of person, and it's hard to categorize, but there's a sweetness to the threes that is just so heartfelt that it's a, a very warming, it's very moving, um, and it's incredibly kind. And the third non-obvious thing is a particular relationship to mirrors that threes have. Now, I've shared this in my programs, and many threes go, oh, I absolutely do this. And some threes go, oh, I'm not like that. And then when we get examples, either from people who are threes who can give great examples, or I give examples, the other threes go, okay, yeah, I do that. Okay, yeah, I do that. So what the relationship to the mirror is, is that it's very hard for threes to go past a mirror, wherever it is, and not look in it. And other types might occasionally look in it, and twos might, for example, look in it sort of to reinforce they're still there, but they can bypass a mirror. But in type three, the mirrors there, are, they feel they must look into it. Now, what are they looking at or what are they looking for? Let me give an example of threes in the morning. And I have many threes in my life, and um, so my son's a three, and I've had, you know, ex-husband is a three, and lots of friends. So they going someplace, and they're dressed for that, appropriate or what they think is going to be like, help them be successful or respected or well thought of in that environment. So they look in the mirror, and they go, do I look right? Do I look the part? Do I look how I'm supposed to look? And if the answer is no, what they do is they will go and change something. They might change the, the hair, they might change the shirt, the, so the jewelry or the bling, the shoes, whatever. And they almost always would prefer to have a full length mirror because you can't see the whole and they're looking at the whole part. So then what happens is they might go back and change several times and then finally they come up to what looks to them like it needs to look and they feel really good about it. And they go, okay, you look good, you feel good, ready.